Stavanger wears its wealth quietly. It is the oil capital of Norway, but you'd hardly know. It's quaint, quiet, and rich. It didn't start out that way. Hey, fella. <laughs> Bjorn Nudsen and Kristin Alm are the first generation of oil kids born into Norway's petro economy. You know, my, uh, my grandmother, she worked uh, in the herring factories. A lot of things has happened in this town just the last 15, 10, 15 years. Yeah, because there's only five million of us. Yeah. So we are extremely lucky. And I don't think people realize then how important the oil industry has been in order to generate the welfare of this country as a whole. Uh, here we have a sample of the first oil from the Böjla field. So Kristin's a production engineer for Det Norsk. Long before she began working, Norway came up with a bold plan to save its oil riches for the future. Someone uh, several decades ago were really smart on how to deal with the income from this industry. The discovery of oil in the North Sea and the Norwegian Sea transformed Norway from fishing to drilling, from poor to prosperous. Nearly two million barrels a day come up from the watery depths. Rather than scoop up the profits from oil taxes, and then splurge on spending, Norway decided to bank them. So that now there's a huge treasury for the entire country. Norway had a couple of things going for it. Small population, large oil reserves, plus a national ethos of sharing the wealth. So if you wanted to extract oil from here, you had to pay high taxes on profits. It was a forward-thinking plan that meant the riches here were for the citizens. Oil's legacy is woven into the Norwegian culture. An oil museum in Stavanger attracts school trips, educating generations of Norwegians on the value of their natural resources. They had to learn Farouk both. al Harsim, a geologist, was one of the early players. An Iraqi, he came here 40 years ago to get better health care for his disabled son. This is a, a floater. It floats. Mm -hmm. With his oil experience, the Norwegian government grabbed him in 1968 to analyze some preliminary seismic data. So in May 1968, when you looked at those documents, what did you see? To me, it was very, very obvious. Uh, it's only a matter of time before uh, Norway becomes a major uh, oil and gas producer. Just a year and three months later, almost, we made a big discovery. And then the country really moved. But they were very determined that the major share of the profit will have to be to the citizens of the country. And that's how it is today, too. At first, Norway plowed the oil revenues back into the industry, growing the infrastructure out in the North Sea. But by the 1990s, the money was gushing in, so the government set up an oil fund for every Norwegian. At the oil museum, the ticker counts up the returns in real time, over six trillion krona, going up every minute. That's one trillion dollars. Norge Bank now manages the largest sovereign wealth fund in the world for Norway's five million people. Turning Oslo into a modern, expensive city with a new financial center. Norwegians own shares in more than 8,000 companies worldwide, including over 200 in Canada. The pension fund, as it's now called, makes every Norwegian a millionaire on paper. Not a bad legacy. Finance Minister Siv Jensen can dig into that oil fund, but there are strict limits. Only 4% a year, no more. But that chunk grows every year. We all agree that we, we are not facing a crisis. We have a very robust economy. We have uh, low unemployment, high employment. We have growth and we have a huge surplus. And that uh, is a very robust start in a situation with a, a decline in oil prices. Compare Norway's approach to Alberta's, both with resource funds. Norway's oil fund, begun in 1990, has ballooned 
to over $1 trillion. Alberta's Heritage Fund, begun in 1976, today stands about $17 billion. We're not, however, prepared to enter into programs where we're subsidizing projects in other parts of Canada through the Heritage Savings Trust Fund. Alberta's Premier Peter Lougheed developed the Heritage Fund, but the province put in smaller and smaller slices and then used that fund for general revenues. It stopped contributing royalties altogether in 1987. Had Alberta followed Norway's rules, it could be worth 10 times what it is today. Look at where Alberta is today. Canada is in a bind. Alberta is even worse off. Rolf Weiberg studied at the University of Alberta, petroleum engineering. In Norway, he managed exploration for one of the oil majors before going into government work. Weiberg says Norway took its cue on heritage funds from Alberta. Only Norway stuck to its plan, while Alberta didn't. We don't change our policies for the oil price. You can't do that. Lougheed government in Alberta knew that. They made policies and then they left them. Could we do Norway's way in Canada? For all those last 10 years, when nothing went into the Alberta Heritage Fund, and we put a lot of money aside, the profit went out of Canada. Some Canadians own stock, they prospered. But Canada as a nation, Alberta as a province, well, you just look around, look at the budget, look at the problem of getting a budget through these days or even knowing what the numbers to put in. We have a budget, we're not scared. But with oil at 50 bucks a barrel, governments in Oslo, in Calgary, in Moscow, are all grappling with the same thing. A future where oil is not the golden goose it once was. Now that we are facing the turning points where uh, the oil and gas industry will no longer be the, the engine to the growth of the Norwegian economy, we need to make sure that we, we uh, balance this uh, and are able to transform our economy towards broader markets. And that's what we are uh, facing right now. What you see here is um, a full-scale offshore drilling unit as a facility which is part of the Research Institute. And the At Stavanger's Drilling and Well Centre, Audra Shavlon tells us his industry clients need to find efficiencies with better technology. Manpower is very expensive offshore. So the more of these operations that can be automated, less personnel is needed. You see here? You can smell it more oily, it's, it's like hands-on. The driller's cabin, or the doghouse, shows the evolution from old to new. So what you see here is uh, cyber-based controlled drilling. Wow. This is um, the, the industry standard of today. It's amazing compared to what you saw downstairs. This is um, the toy of the youngsters today. Imagine young personnel coming in, used to the Game Boy and PlayStation. There's nothing to it. Easy for them. Rather than the old seniors, they're very, very reluctant to get in here. That's why we have a lot of training. Young Norwegians, though, see dimming prospects for an offshore career, just not as bright as it used to be. I was uh, having a dream about starting in the oil industry because everybody talks about the oil industry, how well paid it is. Pia Hagerup was trained as a plumber, but always had her eye on the rigs. Better money. She took the requisite offshore courses and landed work for three years on the rigs until last month she was let go. I never saw that coming actually because uh, the market was on its way up really. The oil uh, market was, the oil branch was screaming for workers just a year ago before that and suddenly the market just flipped like that and uh, people were, many thousands of people have got dismissed, got oh, fired. Right. So it's, uh, it's a uh, it's a bad time for the uh, oil industry in Norway. Hi, Norway's littlest children missed the big boom years of oil, but the dividends are still funding their futures. Full-time sports kindergarten, for example, is relatively cheap, as oil continues to pump in a quarter of Norway's GDP. But with the current fall in prices, 
and predictions it may stay that way for a while. Even Stavanger is not immune. People are getting the feeling that we are rich. We can survive almost any crisis. And that's a dangerous feeling. Especially now with the price of oil at half what it was six months ago. And that is precisely why it is nice to have the fund behind us. Because without it, we would have been a very, very worried nation. Lessons from Stavanger. Worth attention in Canada. Norway's way did well by them. Susan Ormiston, CBC News, Stavanger, Norway.